Hi and welcome back to Sunsement. In this video we're going to talk about Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's syndrome, Huntington's disease and hemibalismus. All of these are basal ganglia disorders. But before that let's just uh, briefly discuss basal ganglia. So what is basal ganglia? Basal ganglia is a network of different nuclei with the primary function of planning and initiating movement. The components of basal ganglia include caudate nucleus, putamen, globus pallidus, which with two subparts, externa and interna, subthalamic nucleus, abbreviated STN, and substantia nigra with its two components, pars reticulata and pars compacta, meaning the compact part and the reticular part. Thalamus is generally not a major part of basal ganglia. It is, however, the sensory center that receives signals from the basal ganglia. And just to navigate you, you also see here the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle. It might be better to understand uh, the basal ganglia with a schematic drawing. Basal ganglia essentially has two pathways. The direct pathway, seen here, and the indirect pathway, seen here. The black arrows will show you inhibitor signals. These are done by GABA. And the clear arrows shows you excitatory signals, which is done essentially by glutamate. So let's start with the direct pathway. The cortex uh, starts by sending glutamate to the striatum, which essentially is mainly the head of the caudate nucleus and putamen, primarily the caudate nucleus. Once it receives these signals, the nuclei become excited and they send GABA inhibitory signals to the globus pallidus interna and the reticular part of substantia nigra. Once they receive this inhibitor signal, they won't be able to send their own inhibitor signals, resulting in uninhibition of the thalamus, which can then uh, send excitatory signals to the supplementary motor area uh, and other parts of the cerebral cortex. These two inhibitions in, are generally called disinhibition, which is similar to two negatives become a positive in mathematics. Uh, by this disinhibition in the direct pathway, you uh, would essentially not be able to inhibit the excitatory movement of thalamus to your cortex. So now movements can uh, be initiated uh, and uh, the cortex will then execute them. Now let's do the indirect pathway. The indirect pathway starts the same way. Cortex and uh, signals to the striatum, which will now uh, send inhibitor GABA to the external part of the globus pallidus, which in turn will uh, not be able to send its own inhibitor signals to the subthalamic nucleus. So once again, you see double inhibition, essentially disinhibition, which results in excitation uh, from the subthalamic nucleus, which will now send glutamate to the internal part of globus pallidus in combination with the reticular part of substantia nigra. And now since th these will become active, they send inhibitor signals to the thalamus, resulting in that thalamus will not be able to send excitatory signals to the cortex. And this ba basic mechanism describes most of the basal ganglia. But one important thing that we haven't mentioned yet is the compact part of the substantia nigra. What is its function? Since substantia nigra, which is in your midbrain, is the dopamine storage of your central nervous system. And dopamine in the basal ganglia uh, system uh, works as a fuel. So what does it uh, essentially mean? When compact part sends dopamine to the striatum, it binds to its dopamine receptors that are placed uh, found there. And there are two families there. The D1 family, which are excitatory, and D2 family, which are inhibitory. The D2 family will inhibit the indirect pathway, while the D1 family will enhance the direct pathway. So we will have a more specific and powerful initiation of the movement without being inhibited by the indirect pathway. But at the same time, the striatum will also receive acetylcholine from the cortex, which works the opposite way of uh, dopamine. It will enhance the indirect pathway and in inhibit the direct pathway. This is very important when we uh, talk about Parkinson, the balance between dopamine and acetylcholine. So now that we have reviewed the basics of basal ganglia, let's just remember three nuclei here that are associated with the three conditions that we're gonna talk about. Substantia nigra is associated with Parkinson. Striatum is associated with Huntington's disease 
and the subthalamic nucleus with hemibalismus or balismus. Hope you enjoyed it.